A nice example is the Tour de France. There are some interesting analyses being made that show that up to a couple of years ago at least, but perhaps even up to today, certainly also 2006, um, Landis and now uh, uh, 2010 uh, with, um, with Contador, there has never been a tour where the winner or the runner-ups were not directly or indirectly known to have been doping. In other words, the definition of what is the Tour de France um, has always comprised doping or doping-like behavior. What we have always liked about the Tour de France always came with, with doping. So now we're trying to invent something new, which has never existed before, a Tour de France without doping. It's inventing something that that is, 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 has been inexistent uh, before. Why? Well, the, the main reason, of course, is that biomedical advance has led to more and more possibilities. At the beginning of the Tour de France, I mean, they didn't know much about what to take. They took some strychnine, some alcohol, um, some caffeine, and stuff like that. But today, of course, the arsenal of possibilities is just sheer, tremendous, uh, endless. And has led indeed to to behavior that potentially uh, came with with with, uh, with important risk. I already alluded to the excess of the use of erythropoietin in the beginning of the years when erythropoietin came on the market. Um, but but the the Tour de France has always, has always adapted to it and to this to this behavior. It has never become a place where clearly everybody was just falling dead all the time. Uh, it, it auto-regulates the system in a certain way. And of course there was a price to pay. Um, and, and maybe uh, some athletes have suffered from, from the consequences of certain type of behavior. But partly that can be explained because it was relegated into hiding. They had to do it in more or less clandestine ways. Um, if they would have been accompanied, uh, accompanied by... by um, specialists that knew what they were doing and if there would have been from time to time the independent um, uh, look into the medical status of the athletes it probably would have been uh, a, a bit better so just just an, as an example of a sport where it has always been like that and we tried now just to invent something that has never existed before think for example also about the use of enhancement uh, drugs by the general population. Uh, I've heard people in Parliament ask for the introduction of uh, um, compulsory urine testing in students to check for Ritalin and other cognitive performance enhancing drugs. Um, I find this extremely worrying. Imagine that uh, that we tomorrow would start to introduce uh, on a general scale whereabouts rules and, and a compulsory testing uh, of, of general citizens. Sure, I mean, in America it's already in place. Huh? We, we test uh, school kids, for example, um, uh, pilots uh, in, in certain companies, also the, the, the employees of the companies are being tested. It comes with a price. I mean, people are there. Um, kicked out of their job uh, even though they had not used uh, whatever drug uh, people were looking for because of all kinds of problems with testing I mean you eat a little bit too much of, um, of poppy seed uh, bread and and you come out positive uh, for the use of uh, of, uh, of opiates uh, you, you probably have a, a, a hygiene in your life which is just terrible you, you have to be paying attention all the time to what you eat and uh, and make sure that if you take a supplement that it's really one that's been checked for everything imaginable. I find it very difficult. Now imagine that we would try to do similar type of things in general society. I, I find it very worrying. I understand your worries and I understand also your viewpoint that yes, ideally it would be wonderful if we could invent a system where everybody would stick to the rules and sport would be free of doping. But it's illusory. It doesn't exist. Because it's humans that do sports, and humans are not perfect, and it's just it's impossible to get where we try to get, and and we try so hard to get there, that it comes with a price, and the price becomes very stiff to pay. And our view on things is that it is becoming too expensive, not not in terms of money only, yeah? in in general, it becomes too expensive. So we must look for alternatives, even if these alternatives come with consequences, like for example, you 
not choosing to become a professional athlete because you just can't live with the idea of sticking a needle in your arm. Perfectly fine. No problem. But others probably will be willing to, to do that. It will change dramatically the way sports looks and, 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 uh, and is organized and, and maybe also the people who do the sports. But okay, that's maybe the future. Uh, one more thing I want to say. I'm really happy that there are people like you who are uh, questioning also the system. Me as an athlete, I want to do the sport professionally and I go with the rules. Sure. And yeah. if one day yeah. they will change, I have to think about it. Yeah. Do I want to go with okay. these rules or not? But I'm, I, uh, because as an athlete, you always have to be worried if you say these rules I don't like, um, then you, you, um, somebody said, uh, well, you get uh, uh, bad uh, feedback or, yeah. And uh, as an athlete, you say, okay, uh, these are the rules, I do them. 